Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and you are listening to The Daily Dose. And today is Tuesday, July 5th. I hope everybody had an amazing, long, and enjoyable 4th of July weekend celebrating Independence Day with those that you love. I hope it was a great weekend, everybody. I don't have a ton of info for you today as we're just kind of getting the week started, although it, it already feels like a Wednesday because we've we've been buried today. But I had a super interesting conversation with a group of of industry professionals. Some of you may have heard me reference this in the past, but I host a uh, mortgage and real estate room on Tuesdays where agents and mortgage professionals from all over the country participated, basically like an insider's conference call. And today we were talking about a ton of strategies around affordability. And you've heard me talk about uh, the interest rate buy-down strategy in the past where we're using, you know, hopefully the seller's contribution to buy an interest rate down. And there's all Also, what's called a 2-1 buy down, where you can temporarily buy the rate down 2% the first year, then 1% the second year. And those ideas were getting bounced around. Uh, Some people had read articles regarding a 40-year mortgage, and there was some uh, questions uh, surrounding the uh, viability of a 40-year mortgage and whether we thought that was going to come to market. Actually, there are uh, 40-year terms available for uh, investment programs right now where the first 10 years of the loan are interest only and then they become 30-year amateurized loans. It's a 40-year term with the first 10 years being interest only, but those right now are designed primarily for real estate investors who are buying investment property, like a rental property. Um, So it was interesting. We talked a little bit about Japan and the, uh, the result of Japan creating the 100-year mortgage. And a lot of people are unaware of that, but it's it's an interesting read if you're ever bored out of your mind. Just Google Japan's 100-year mortgage and you'll see the pros and cons of that. You know, we talked about the government programs that may or may not come to bail, uh, not bail people out, but to make housing more affordable. Is there going to be some subsidy money, some grant money, some, you know, there was some talk when Biden was running for president that there would be a $15,000 first-time buyer's grant. We've yet to see any of that uh, come to fruition. But anyway, a ton of conversation around all of that. And some of the agents in the room were mentioning that their buyers are getting counseled by friends and and other data sources. I don't know who this is coming from, that, you know, a crash is on the horizon and interest rates are most likely going to come back down because of the recession. And all of that being considered, it might make more sense to wait to buy a property. And I get it. I, listen, I totally get it. Everybody wants to make the best possible deal deal on a property. But it made me think also too, if we're looking or we're waiting, I guess is the better way to say it, for outside influences, whether it's an economic crash, whether it's the government um, helping, if we're looking for outside uh, assistance, we might be doing ourselves a disservice because what I really want to encourage everybody to focus in on is what can you do to better your personal circumstance. And for the purpose of this conversation, we're talking about buying real estate and specific to this afternoon's conversation, the first time buyer. If you can afford a payment, if your rent is $1,800 a month or $2,000 a month, I think the local rent here in my market, just the average eclipse 2000 a month. So if you have been comfortable, not happy, but comfortable, you've been able to make that payment, maybe take a look at what you could buy for $2,000 thousand dollars a month. What would that two thousand dollar a month payment equate to in a purchase price? Would it be a two hundred thousand dollar condo? Would it be a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar townhouse? Would it be a three hundred thousand I don't know it's going to be determined by a lot of factors. Your ability to put a down payment down, the interest rate that you qualify for. My point is not to get super specific about what you could buy with it, but to encourage you to take a look at what you could buy with it because the difference in the interest rate alone shouldn't be the deciding factor. I mean, we've talked about it many, many times on the radio show and on previous Daily Dose uh, episodes where people bought properties with 18% interest rates. People bought properties in 2005 and held them through the Great Recession. And it was a great decision long term. 
They lived in a home, they raised their family in a home, they built equity, and now today or along the way they sold or refinanced or there was, my point is there was equity created, not because they were waiting for uh, something to change, they changed their something. So that's all I wanted to share. Don't put your head in the sand and wait for somebody to, to come pull it out for you. Look around and see how you can better your circumstance. Do the best that you can with what you have available to you. And if what you have available to you is a 5.5% interest rate, well then maximize that. Go out there and buy the best house you can for the payment that you can afford. Use what you have to the best of your ability and I think you'll find that your life, or in this case, your real estate holdings in your equity position are going to improve. So I don't know, maybe I'm feeling patriotic about, you know, the home of the brave and the land of the free. And I know there was some terrible news this weekend too. I'm not discounting that, but you know, we live in a country that affords us a lot of opportunities. I think one of the keys is realizing that it's up to us to seize those opportunities and make the decisions that we need to maximize those opportunities. So that's it. That's all I have for you today. Again, my name is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and you have been listening to The Daily Dose, and we will talk again tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks.